Hi, welcome to this new part, part 18. We are looking at real questions on AWS Cloud Practitioner. In this part, we will look at questions linked with these topics. Please do refer this playlist for previous questions. Hit the subscribe and the like button. It gives me a lot of motivation. If I get subscribes and likes, that gives me the pulse of the audience. If you have already cleared this certification, please jump into AWS Solution Architect Associate. There is, There are two playlists which you can refer to help yourselves. Let's look at this question. So this question is talking about how do you, you know, like what is that feature where a resource supply is matched to the workloads? Basically supply demand. If you have a supply of 100 chocolates and there is a demand for 80 chocolates then the remaining 20 will be on the shelf will have more shelf life so in here also we are talking about resource supply which is in terms of compute so security just addresses the safety net piece it does not talk about uh, matching the supply and the demand okay so A is wrong. Reliability. Reliability is uh, if the system is up and running, it keeps up and running for its entire duration. It is highly reliable. Uh, it doesn't go down. And the data is also reliable. It is trusted one. In this case, reliability will not help you with supply and demand. Elasticity will help you with supply demand because what happens is you have a big workload coming in. So if your system is elastic, that means compute will be added to process those workloads. So if there is a demand for 100 chocolates, you just have 60, but you have capacity to immediately ramp up and add 40 chocolates from other vendors then that will meet the demand that is called elasticity so c is the answer for me but let's look at d high availability high availability means the system does not go down it is mostly available for operations and business it does not or it is not linked with supply and demand and uh, you know managing or aligning the compute resources it is all about keeping the application up and running for a longer period of time so this is my final answer let's look at this next question so there is a business they were on premises so this is the on-prem box and now they want to go on cloud okay so this is your aws they want to go on cloud and they want to move their production workload to cloud so what the question is asking is you want to lower the operating expenses when you are doing this move from here to here when you are doing this move you want to reduce the opex cost you have to choose two answers let's scan through the options here a says reduce over provision instances so this looks apt because when you are moving to cloud and if your instances are over provisioned and overloaded then you will have to uh, over provision means you just had a requirement for three ec2 instances but you have provision six so what will happen is uh, it will always utilize three to a great extent but remaining three will always be a waste of uh, compute resources so you will not be saving cost so first you have to reduce those over provision if you have six and you know that you you will only use three then reduce it to make it three or four that way you will save the operating expenses that is what the question is asking lower operating expenses so a is my answer one but i need one more answer b says rehost all third party licenses on aws thus rehosting the license will not help you you will be ultimately using the same license licenses that were provisioned earlier it's just like now you will be putting them on ec2 instances so this will not help you c says implement a highly available architecture if you're making an architecture which is highly available 
it will increase your operating expenses it will not decrease highly available there is a cost to everything uh, there is no lunch which is free in this world so if you have a system which will be available 365 days a year then you have to pay for it for example amazon.com it is highly available it is always up and running it never goes down if that is a kind of infrastructure and application need you have then you will have to spend a lot of money amazon.com spends a lot of money to keep their systems and web applications highly available so this will increase your cost not decrease your cost so c is wrong d says use managed services managed services will help you lower your operating expenses because you don't have to worry about manually attuning your resources managed services will take care of it automatically so d is my second answer e says improve application security if you are hell bent on improving the application security then you might go to the extent of you know encrypting your data at rest at transit and those are very expensive operations and those will not reduce your operating expenses it will increase it will increase your operating expenses so this is the final answer see there is a business they want us uh, want to provide a single user one guy they want complete access to the bucket that means this guy can write read delete they want complete access one user should have complete access so what element in s3 bucket policy contains information about users who need access to s3 bucket so there are four options here so let's look at statement first d so i could not spot anything which is called statement in s3 bucket policy creation so for me d is wrong let's look at c so c is talking about resource see if you see this documentation it talks about you know policies and permissions under policies and permissions it is talking about resources principles actions etc which is all we are looking for principal actions resources so when we talk about resources it is talking about amazon resource names arn format okay so each resource whether it be ec2 instances or or any other instances uh, or databases etc they all have arn associated with it so remember that arn excludes it excludes region and namespace but includes the following it has partition service relative id but do you see that does the resource contain information about users who need access to the bucket no it does not so c is wrong let's look at let's look at b that is actions so basically action is the set of permissions that you specify in a policy some of the actions can be object operations or bucket operations like these for example create bucket list all my buckets get the bucket location so this will still not help you with the users who need access to s3 bucket so b is wrong that leaves us with only one option that is a principle so if you see your principle this element it specifies user account service or other entity that is allowed or denied access to a resource this is exactly what we need for this question because this question is asking about users who need access to the s3 bucket so this is my final answer please hit the subscribe and the like button do not forget to visit the entire part of this playlist there are hundreds of questions and you can also go through the comments there are a lot of people who have cleared the certification and have put in good words about how helpful this channel was to support them this brings us to the end of part 18 in this part we covered questions which are linked with these topics these questions these topics there are two playlists on aws solution architect associate do also plan to work on that certification both those playlists will help you clear the certification all questions on this channel are relevant for even any certification exams happening today as well